What's up guys, Justin here from TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another V-Ray for SketchUp tutorial for you. So in this video I want to talk about how you can use V-Ray proxies to speed up your SketchUp model. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the kind of funny things about SketchUp and, and one of the things that can make rendering in SketchUp a little bit difficult is it's actually not super good at handling super high polygon models. So the more faces and the more geometry you have in your model, the slower everything's gonna run. It just doesn't handle all of that geometry very well. And so the problem is though, a lot of the time you really need high polygon, high detail models within your SketchUp model in order to create a realistic rendering. And so what V-Ray has is it has a tool called Proxies that basically allows you to export your objects out of your model and um, replace them with a low polygon preview model Model. And then when you actually do a rendering, um, V-Ray will reference those files externally. Um, it'll bring them in. They're called meshes. It'll reference those meshes externally without you having to show them in your model. And so the first thing I want to note is this actually isn't for speeding up your renderings. This is actually for speeding up your actual models. And so um, I'm going to use these trees as an example. And basically these trees, these are three models that I brought in from extension called scatter and so I want to do another video on scatter in the future but it's basically designed to uh, randomly scatter different objects within your model so it's great for scattering things like rocks and trees and kind of organic things that don't happen on a grid and so um, these are three models that come along with that and they're very very detailed and so if I was to come in here for example and do a preview render and I was to zoom in, you can see how this creates very detailed trees within your rendering. So just the way the geometry is in here, these look very realistic, but the trade-off with these is they're very high polygon. So if I was to stop my interactive render and then go up to Window, Model Information, and I was to look at my model information, you can see that these trees have something like 262,000 faces in them and 630,000 edges. If I was to look at my file size for this model, you can see how just these three trees take up 70 megabytes um, just by themselves. And that's without having a building model in here or anything else. And so obviously SketchUp is really going to start to slow down when you try to display all of that geometry. And so let's go ahead and take a look at V-Ray's proxy creation tools. And I'll kind of walk you through what they do and what you can do with those. Um, I do want to note that Scatter also has some built-in tools for creating those render-only objects that I want to talk about in the future, but uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you're interested in landscape rendering type tutorials. But for right now, what I want to do is I want to create a V-Ray proxy. And so within V-Ray, um, you're going to want to go into your V-Ray objects toolbar. And so that's one of the three toolbars that's included in V-Ray 3.6. And I do want to note this is important that um, this is V-Ray 3.6. So the older versions may not have all of these different options in here and they're going to look different. So, but in V-Ray 3.6, what you're going to do is you're going to find an object and you're going to click on it. And you'll notice when you select your object, um, your component, you can see how this option um, becomes dark. So if you're not clicked on an object, for example, that's going to be grayed out. But if you click on this, it's, this, it's then going to allow you the option to export a proxy. And so basically what that means is that means that whatever object you have selected, in this case this tree component, it's going to export this as what's called a VR mesh file. And that's basically a file that V-Ray can read um, when it's creating a rendering. And so when you click on that, you're going to get a couple different options. And these are all going to affect the size of the object that you're going to be able to create and replace this object with. And so there's three options in here for how this proxy is created and we'll take a look at each one of them so if you click this drop down you can see you get an option for face skipping you get an option for refine clustering and you get an option for vertex clustering and so basically what that's saying is that's saying okay these are the different ways that we can create a proxy and so each one of these um, creates it in a different way and so the first one I want to look at is the face skipping and what the face skipping is going to do is this is going to be the fastest, lightest weight proxy you can create. And so it's just going to display random faces from your original mesh. And so in this case, I'm going to set my folder for where I want to save this file. 
and I'm gonna set this to face skipping. And you'll notice when you do this, there's an option in here for faces in preview, so that you can drag this slider and that's gonna affect how many faces are created within your proxy. So if you remember, we had something like 260,000 faces. So if each one of these had, um, if each one of these had something like 10,000 faces, we'd still be significantly smaller. And then these last two options are just, um, override existing files is if you have a file in that folder with the same name it'll just override it and then replace object with proxy will basically replace this object in your model otherwise this will create a proxy but it won't swap it out so let's go ahead and click the export button and see what this creates with face skipping and so with face skipping what this does is this just randomly takes faces from your object and it leaves them within your model so if we take a look at this, we zoom around, you can see how this has significantly less geometry than this, but it still has a bunch in here. Um, and in this case, this is actually a pretty fairly decent approximation of what this tree looked like. And so if we were to go back in though, and we were to do an interactive render, you'll notice that this object still renders as this tree. And the reason for that is because V-Ray actually references that VR mesh file that you exported when it creates your render. So even though this is in here looking like this, um, you're actually still rendering the geometry that was in here before. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna undo this and let's go back in and run it again on this same tree. So let's export our proxy and in this case, drag our faces and preview option down to something like a thousand. And then we'll click the export button. And so that's gonna overwrite the proxy that was created in that folder. But you can see how now what this does is this creates a much less detailed preview of what this object is gonna look like. And even though it creates a less detailed preview, if you were to do, if you were to do another preview render of this object, it's still gonna render the same way. So this is still gonna get rendered as your tree geometry in here, even though you've replaced it with this kind of funky looking um, proxy. And so now let's take a look at what the other two proxy creation types create. So let's start with this middle one. And so basically these, you basically pick between these, you're kind of trying to do a trade off between how much detail you wanna keep in your model and how lightweight you want this to be. So in this case, you have two other options. There's vertex clustering and refine clustering. And so the vertex clustering is kind of in the middle. Um, this kind of uses a grid to reduce the amount of geometry in your proxy model. Um, it doesn't necessarily keep all of the fine details, but it's gonna be more detailed than the face skipping. So if I was to come in here, for example, and let's go ahead and we'll drag this down a little bit. And let's say we create like 3000 faces in the preview for this one. And I go ahead and I export that. You can see how this is gonna treat this geometry a little bit differently than the face skipping did. And so in this case, you can see how these are rectangular. The reason they're rectangular is because each one of these leaves is actually in here as kind of a transparent material applied to a rectangular face. But you can see how this still gives you a fairly detailed view of what your tree is gonna look like. And again, if we go in and we do an interactive render, you can see how that's still rendering as your tree, even though this is in here um, as much lighter geometry. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna undo that. And let's go ahead and create a proxy in here using the vertex clustering that has more faces. So let's go ahead and export it with the 10,000 faces. So you can see how in this case, that doesn't really look that much different. Um, and I do wanna note that these are in here as components. So let's say for example, I was to make a copy of this object off to the side, this is gonna act like any other component within SketchUp. So you can see how as I created a copy over here and I move this around, um, this copy of the proxy is gonna show up within my model as well. So you can create copies of proxies and easily add things into your renderings. And so for the last option, let's go ahead and take a look at the refine clustering. And so the refine clustering is gonna be the most detailed kind of proxy you can create. And uh, basically it uses the vertex clustering to start and then it finishes the proxy off with more of an algorithm. So this creates more detailed proxies, but it's also gonna be the slowest. So let's go ahead and export one of those and see what that proxy is gonna look like. So 
so you can see how in this one it kind of took all of your uh, it created all of these rectangles but then it kind of uh, inferenced some lines in here as well so you can see how all of these are prox are ways that you can uh, reduce the amount of geometry within your model so now if I was to go in and look at my model information you can see how instead of having 262,000 faces or whatever I had in here before, now I have something like nine or 10,000. So this is gonna be significantly smaller. So if we were to go in and look at this file, you can see how this V-Ray proxy trees smaller file that we created is significantly smaller and more lightweight. And so basically what we've done is we've reduced the size of this file while still being able to come in here and do an actual rendering of our real geometry. Because basically what this is doing is this is referencing those VR mesh files that we created. And within this model, you can also import those mesh files back in. Now I will know, and I'm gonna do another video on this a little bit later, if you try to import these into another model, you're gonna to have to do some stuff with the materials in order to get that to load properly. Because all the materials basically get loaded up into a material, like a multiple material file off to the side. We'll talk about that in another video. And so the only other thing I wanna talk about real quick is just, um, I want to talk about the way these proxies preview within um, V-Ray. So right now you can see how each one of these is previewing um, basically just as the proxy that we created. And so that's fine. Um, you can see how if you go in here, for example, and you can see how each one of the proxies that we created shows up in here in your geometry section of your V-Ray asset editor. Um, but basically you can adjust that preview type. So let's say for example, that we were to adjust the preview type of let's say the full number three, and we were to select that as a bounding box option. So basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a box basically within the boundary of the object within V-Ray. So you can see how you can adjust the way that these proxies look. You can show the full proxy, the bounding box, um, the origin point, a couple different things. You can also show the whole mesh. You'll notice that you get a warning over here that this displays the original mesh. So this will display the original object in here, but it's really slow and if you're not careful you can crash your model when you do this. So I wouldn't recommend doing much with the whole mesh, but you can see how if you want to you can go ahead and preview this as a whole mesh in here. So proxy preview is just going to show your proxy um, basically as you created it. Bounding box is going to show a box basically around the perimeter of the object. Um, point and origin will show four points or eight points basically at the boundaries of the box made up by the object as well as the origin of the object. And then the last option is the custom preview. And theoretically the way the custom preview is supposed to work is it's supposed to let you change the proxy file without updating the preview geometry. So there's also a function in here for animation, and uh, my understanding is um, you can use this to create animated proxies, but you have to use proxy files created from like 3ds Max or another program, I believe. So, so this is a great way to bring in detailed geometry into your models without having to show all of the geometry and really slow down your SketchUp model. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Did you find it helpful? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering tutorials every week. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.